Forex trading can result in a profit or a loss. Depending on the trading career, experience, knowledge and other factors, a trader can be called successful or not. But regardless of the final result, everyone faces a drawdown. And drawdowns occur for any trader. Without them, it is simply impossible to trade in FX. Therefore, let's figure out what it is and how to turn a drawdown into a profit. So this topic will be divided into two or maybe three parts. So after watching this one, do check if there is a second part available on the channel. So first, let's start with the definitions. What is a drawdown? So the first thing every trader needs to know is that there is no need to be afraid of drawdowns. This is an absolutely natural state in the trading business. A drawdown is a peak to throw decline in funds on the trading account as a result of losing trades. In other words, a drawdown occurs when trading yields a loss. So a drawdown can be floating, which is temporary, or fixed, which is permanent. So a temporary drawdown is a situation when losing positions have not yet been closed. Permanent or fixed drawdown occurs when losing positions are closed. And if a floating drawdown does not affect the account equity, then a fixed drawdown reduces the balance. So let's start with the examples of a floating drawdown. So your account equity is, uh, for example, $5,000 and you bought 10 Walt Disney shares for $100 each. Some time later, the price, share price fell and now they are trading at $90. Since you bought shares more expensive, you have a temporary drawdown of $10 per share. Thus, the temporary funds are the, uh, on the account are $4,900, while the balance is unchanged and equals $5,000. If the price reverses and starts rising, the drawdown will decrease. So now let's talk about the example of a fixed drawdown. Your account equity is again $5,000 and you bought 10 Walt Disney shares for $100 each. Sometime later, the share price fell and now they are trading at $90. Since you bought stocks more expensive, you have a temporary drawdown of $10 per share. So you assume that the price will fall further, so you exit the losing trades. After closing your positions, your balance has changed and now you have $4,900 on your account. Thus, the floating drawdown turned into a fixed one. So, how is drawdown calculated? So from the examples here, you can understand exactly how the drawdown is calculated. Most often, traders calculate two types of it. Drawdown from initial funds and maximum drawdown. So let's start with the initial one. So first we have a base drawdown, which equals initial account equity minimum minus minimum deposit value. And this is all divided by the initial amount equity and then it is all multiplied by 100%. So basically for us, it will be base drawdown equals 5,000 minus 4,900. 4, this is all divided by 5,000, and then this is all multiplied by 100%, which for us, it was 2% of our capital in this example. That's our basic drawdown relative uh, for the balance funds before entering trade, yes is 2% as I said. Then we discuss the maximum drawdown. So the maximum drawdown is a temporary indicator that shows the difference between the peak and the subsequent throw on an investment on a trading account. So again, the equation is as follows. So maximum drawdown equals max account margin minus minimum account margin. This is divided by maximum account margin and this is all then multiplied by 100%. So for us, in our example, will be 5,500 minus 4,500, all divided by 5,500, and again, all multiplied by 100%. And so the result is 18.18%. .18%. So, uh, as for the types of drawdown, there are several uh, types of uh, drawdowns as well as ways uh, to record them. So to more accurately determine what kind of drawdown a trader needs uh, to calculate, there is an official classification. So we have the floating, which is temporary drawdown when a trader has losing positions open, the fixed, 
which is of course permanent drawdown, occurs when a trader fixes a floating loss and exits losing trades. So we have the maximum drawdown, which is the peak to throw decline a foreign investment or trading account during the whole period of trading. Then there is a relative drawdown, which is the difference between the initial deposit size and the maximum loss, which is the temporary or permanent for the entire trading period. Absolute drawdown, which is the difference in the trading account equity before and after trading. So floating drawdown or temporary drawdown is a change in the trading account equity over time. This type of drawdown is also called a working drawdown since it occurs when there are open positions in uh, where are, there are open trading positions. So now let's discuss of course the example of floating drawdown. Again, we have $5,000 on our balance and uh, we decide to buy 10 shares of Raytheon technology at a price of $100 per share. Before entering a trade, the balance and equity are equal. Two days later, the share price fell to $85. Since the current price is below the purchase price, there is a floating loss of $15 per share or $150 in total. In this case, the balance will remain $5,000, but the equity will drop to $4,850. So the missing $150 is the floating drawdown. So to calculate the current drawdown, we use the standard formula. So it equals to balance minus current equity. So uh, the percentage of floating equity we calculate as previously. So we have the balance minus current equity divided again by balance and we times it, multiply it by 100%. So in our case, it will be the calculation as follows. So first one, the floating drawdown will be 5000 minus uh, 4800, which is 150. So we have the terms in dollars. And as for the percentages, we have the 5000 minus 4850. This again divided by 5000 and multiplied by 100%, which in total it gives us the result of 3%. So things you should remember is that a floating loss is a relative value. It doesn't mean that the trader's activity is unsuccessful. It means that the current price is not where you expected it to be. But in a minute, everything can change and even a big drawdown can disappear. So the optimal size of the floating drawdown depends on the trading strategy. However, if a drawdown exceeds 50%, one should do something. So, a fixed drawdown is a net difference in the trading account balance before entering a trade and after fixing it. Occurs when all unprofitable positions are closed. So let's discuss the example of a fixed drawdown. So again, we have $5,000 on our balance and we decide to buy 10 shares again of the same company Raytheon Technology at a price of $100 per share. Two days later, the share price fell to $85. So since the current price is below the purchase price, there is a temporary loss of $15 per share or $150 in total. So we decide to exit the trade at a loss to avoid further losses. In this case, our balance will decrease after the trade is closed and become equal to 4850. So to calculate the fixed drawdown, we use the formula. So it equals starting balance minus final balance. In terms of percentages, it is equal to fixed drawdown times 100% and then we divide it by the initial balance. And for us, the calculation is as follows. We have those in terms of money. We calculate it like that. We have the $5,000, our initial deposit minus a fixed drawdown minus final deposit, which is um, $4,850. And it, of course, equals $250. And in terms of percentages, we have $150 multiplied by 100% and we divided by 5,000 of the initial deposit. And of course, again, it equals to 3%. So you should remember uh, that a fixed drawdown in FX is an indicator that the trades you made were losing. The effectiveness of the trading system is assessed by the size of the fixed drawdown. According to the basic parameters of successful trading systems, the fixed drawdown should not exceed 20%. So now we discuss the absolute drawdown, which in FX is the difference between the initial deposit and the largest equity loss. 
it occurs with the opening of the first transaction on the account and remains until the next increase. This is the most important and informative type of a drawdown. An example of an absolute drawdown is as follows. So again, we have our initial $5,000 on our balance and as a result of transaction made during the month, the balance decreased to 4,800. Taking into account open positions, the account equity is 4,700 US dollars. Sometime later, the price went in the predicted direction and the equity increased to 4,850. Since the absolute drawdown is the difference between the initial and the minimum value, it will equal 5,000 minus 4,700, it is $300. So based on this example, it is easy to derive the formula, which is as follows. Absolute drawdown equals to initial balance minus minimum equity. And uh, for us, again, it is, as you can see, 5,000 minus uh, 4,700, which is uh, 300. And for the things that we should remember is that the absolute drawdowns shows the maximum loss relative to the initial investment a trader suffers. The smaller the absolute drawdown, the more efficient uh, the trading strategy is. Experienced and successful traders try to ensure that the absolute drawdown does not exceed 10% of the initial funds. So now we discuss the relative drawdown. So. It is a more common type of absolute drawdown, we could say. The difference is that the relative drawdown is expressed as a percentage. So that is, it is the difference between the initial balance and the minimum equity expressed as a percentage. So as for the calculation formula, uh, it is as follows. So we have relative drawdown equals absolute drawdown multiply by 100% and then this all divided by the initial balance. So for the example previously mentioned, it is as follows. We have 300 multiplied by 100% and then divided all by 5,000, which in terms of the percentage, it equals to 6%. Things that you should remember is that relative drawdown is the most used type of absolute drawdown by most traders. It is used when creating and testing trading strategies. This type of drawdown is also used in strategic investing to determine profitability. Relative drawdown is often referred to as a critical stop loss. When the planned level is reached by the relative drawdown, the trader may decide to completely close all transactions. Otherwise, the margin call will be received. Okay, guys, that would be the end of the first part of the video about the drawdowns. Of course, do check if there is available already the second part. If not, follow us and wait till the publication of the second part of the video. Thank you for watching, until next one, of course.